now 31, let's pick up the change of base formula and then let's get out of this section. So for all positive numbers, m, b, n, b is not equal to one, n is not equal to one, the following holds. If you have log base b of m, all right, and b is something other than 10 or e, meaning you don't have a direct calculator button for it, although some of the newer calculator models do have it, you can write this as any logs base, right? So log base n of m over log base n of b. Or you can just write it as ln of m over ln of b. So you can change this to any base you want as long as you have your original argument and your original base as the arguments of your new logarithms. And I know that sounds like a lot, but we do have buttons for ln on our calculator. And I could also write this as a common log. All right, so log of the argument over log of the base. And I have these two buttons on my calculator so I can make it work. So what I mean by that is we can use the change of base theorem to find an approximation to four decimal places for each logarithm. So how this works, I don't have a log base four button on my calculator. Again, the newer calculators do have that. So I can make this log of 20 over log of four. And I have calculator buttons for the common log. Uh, and so I do log of my argument over log of the base. And let's see what we get as we're rolling through that. Let me clear this out. And I will do log of 20 divided by log of four. And I get about 2.161, okay? And that should be in line with what we would have guessed anyways. Just as we're thinking about this, we know four squared is 16 and four cubed is 64. So I would think the exponent I needed on four to get to 20 would be much closer to two than it was to three, because 20 is closer to 16 than it is to 64. Now I alternately could have done ln of 20 divided by ln of four, All right? And I could have still gotten 2.161. Oh, actually we needed to go four decimal places, my bad. So this would have been 2.1609. Ooh, but this is telling us to round up. So I would round this to one zero. There is my fourth decimal place, okay? All right, similarly over here, we can make this log of 0.7 over log of two. And if we calculate that on our calculator, we're gonna get log of, oops, excuse me, 0.7 divided by log of two. And I am looking at negative 0. Point, okay, I would go four decimals, look at the fifth one. It's telling me to round up. So we will go five, one, four, six. Okay, so going along with this, I could also have written this if I wanted to as ln of 0.7 over ln of two. And let's just check that ln 0.7 divided by ln of two, and we are getting negative 0.5146. Okay. So that rounds us out of this section. And I just wanna mention that for this change of base, like if you ever need to graph something like log base two of x, you could rewrite that and just what I'm saying here off to the side, if, if I ever wanted you to graph log base two of x on your calculator and we don't have that log base two button, now you can type this in as log of x divided by log of two or you could have done ln x over ln two, and now we can graph those functions. So those functions we were graphing in the last section and we didn't have calculator buttons for, we can use that change of base formula and get that to work. All right, so we're rounding out of this section. All right, so I'm hoping that we feel a little bit more comfortable now using these properties of logarithms to either simplify or to expand expressions and then we've got our change of base formula. All right, so with that, we're heading on to 6.6, .6, and we're gonna talk about how to solve logarithmic and exponential equations. I will see you in a bit, bye.